It's Monday, February 14th, and time for your Barbados Bay evening news update. Prime Minister Mia Motley declared that food security is paramount and Guyana and Barbados must find new trade opportunities. She is currently in Georgetown with a 14-member delegation to attend the 2022 International Energy Conference and Expo. We hear more in this report from Newsroom Guyana. When ordinary people trade their goods and services, it does much to support the realization of regional food security. Prime Minister of Barbados Mia Motley told the local private sector on Sunday. Motley said that trade will be occurring in an environment threatened by climate changes as she addressed a reception hosted by GEICO, one of the participating local companies in the 2022 International Energy Conference and Expo Guyana. It is for this reason that Barbados's Agriculture Minister, Chief Agriculture Officer, Permanent Secretary and Producers are among the 14-member delegation in Guyana for the conference. Achieving food and nutritional security within this region is absolutely critical. If that is the case, then we must work together to find new opportunities in technology to help us in almost every area of activity, especially as we fight the climate crisis. And for those of us like Barbados that are water-scarce countries and whose therefore capacity to be able to achieve food and nutritional security is compromised, then our ability to maximize the technological opportunities that exist in today's world is an absolute, absolute necessity. The visit will also seek to forge new opportunities for cooperation between the two countries in several other areas. This approach to improve cooperation has the full support of President Dr. Irfan Ali. And today, I'm very pleased that Prime Minister Motley not only came here, but came with the intention to do personal, intentional, and direct work. And her, her style is exactly what we like. A direct contact. As I said, I said earlier, we are working to remove the bureaucracy between the two countries. Guyana and Barbados are working to establish a policy framework that will see more cooperation, the removal of barriers for trade for both movements of products and people. Government intends to fully capitalize on its rich historical records. Word of this from Minister in the Prime Minister's Office, Senator Dr. Chantal Monroe Knight who toured the Archives Department at Black Rock St. Michael today. She praised the work of the department, which is presently digitizing preserved records. Member of Parliament for St. Thomas, Cynthia Ford, is urging young politicians to look beyond personal gain and to become actively involved in the communities they are elected to represent. Her comments came as she addressed a church service to mark her 52nd anniversary of becoming involved in public life at the Lester Vaughan Secondary School on Sunday. She made clear that politics is all about service. It is important that we now, at our level as members of parliament, continue to fly that flag to show the rest of Barbados that we are a credit to this society and that we are not out there for personal aggrandizement, that we want to drive the biggest car or we want to build the biggest house or we want to do whatever. That is how we are perceived. And it is so far from the truth. The majority of politicians, despite whatever sides they are on, because there are about five or six political parties now, we are there to give representation to the people of Barbados. And that's why I want to nurture, as my days go by, and I have been relieved from the hard work in the ministry where I was, and it was not hard in the sense that it could not be done. But there were so many intricacies that I felt it is my duty to let a younger person come in and understand the kind of work that they have to do to be able to say, I have been laboring in the vineyard to make sure that the poor people of Barbados are the most vulnerable, get that piece of the cake that they deserve. It's Valentine's Day in Barbados, and unlike last year when there were no activities due to the COVID-19 lockdown, Barbadians are celebrating big this time around. In the city today, people flock to stores to get special gifts for their loved ones. On Swan Street, when the boys of mixed variety said, buyers were on the hunt for bargains. We start picking up from Sahada. A lot of sell Sahada, and the first morning, a lot sell. This morning, right? Yes. So you're hoping for, you know, they have a, like, 
for a good Well, last year for Valentine we still do good. Cause we, we had we, we sets online and people was coming at the house and buy them. So we, we did pretty good last year too. Woolworths Managing Director Martin Bryan is also satisfied with this year's sales. We had the with teddy bears which have all sold out now, the small teddy bears, roses and vases, they're all gone. Um, we still have some chocolates here, um, you know, vases, some roses, some, some candles. Um, and then we have gift cards towards the front. Um, so they, they've been the popular items um, and they've sold, they've sold decent. I mean, it's the last couple of days, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We're, we're t today not so much because it's already Valentine's Day, so it's real last minute for anyone coming in today to get Valentine's items. But we still have some left. But I say Valentine's was, 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 was decent. In the latest COVID-19 update, death from the viral illness reached 300 today after a vaccinated 80-year-old woman passed away at the Harrison's Point Isolation Facility. Health officials reported 271 new infections from 1,331 tests conducted by the Besta Santos Public Health Laboratory. The cases comprise 121 males and 150 females. There were 148 people in isolation facilities, while 5,951 were in home isolation. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I am a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental, so at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, Make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley says constitutional changes are coming to revamp the public service. TTT's Terry Ann Brown Campbell tells us more. Minister Dr. Keith Rowley believes this country's investment opportunities are being hampered by too much bureaucratic red tape. He says changes need to be made to our legislation. The constitution that was written for us in 1962 in many areas is wholly inappropriate for Trinidad and Tobago in the 21st century, 2022. If I tell you now that it is my view that permanent secretaries should not only come from those who come up and float up to the top in the public service. The Prime Minister adds, permanent secretaries should also be contracted from the private sector. Today, people at the level of permanent secretaries in Trinidad and Tobago, many of them have not had the pathway of the experts we had before. He noted that they lack the managerial skills and therefore do not take responsibility for their department. Prime Minister Dr. Rowley made his comments as he opened the Nutrimix Group's $60 million next generation hatchery in Cuba on Monday. On the international scene, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has invoked never-before-used emergency powers to support provinces in ending the blockades and public disorder that have gripped Ottawa for 18 days at the hands of participants in the so-called Freedom Convoy. After discussing with Cabinet and Caucus, after consultation with Premiers from all provinces and territories, after speaking with opposition leaders, the federal government has invoked the Emergencies Act to supplement provincial and territorial capacity to address the blockades and occupations. I want to be very clear. The scope of these measures will be time-limited, geographically targeted, as well as reasonable and proportionate to the threats they are meant to address. The Emergencies Act will be used to strengthen and support law enforcement agencies 
at all levels across the country. This is about keeping Canadians safe, protecting people's jobs, and restoring confidence in our institutions. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.